Hi, Randy Kay here. Welcome to Heaven Encounters. My guest today is Jojo Morris, and he had an experience in heaven before God the Father, who had judged him in heaven after he had been attending a very strict religion, and he had been judging others in accordance with this very strict religion that he had been raised in. So you're going to want to hear this. His neck cracked, and immediately he was in heaven. So Jojo, great to have you with us today. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure and honor to be here, and I hope that everyone listening is blessed by this. I'm sure they will, Jojo, and we've got to dive right into this. Tell us about how you were raised in this very strict religion. Absolutely. So it, it all started back in 1995 when I was born. I was born into a mainstream American family there in Texas, and my parents decided to start homeschooling at a very young age. So at age two or three, our family relocated to a farmstead in Oklahoma where we met a Mennonite group, and they we went from being a mainstream American family, having movie night every Friday, going shopping regularly, my mom and the girls going to the mall, to sewing our own clothes, growing our own food, milking our own cows, collecting eggs, and being completely removed from society, being cut off from all of our extended relatives, and being raised in a very, very strict religious group. But as the years went on and as the years passed, I, I noticed something in my family that started switching instead of being loving and open, open-minded, it started turning into a, um, a, a fear-based mindset. And I started struggling with a lot of night terrors as a young child. I remember the earliest night terror I had was at age five. I was paralyzed in a bed with a demonic oppression over me. And it made me so scared. And for years, seven, eight, nine, 10, even 13 years old, I would have these demonic attacks. And during that time, I also struggled with bedwetting. And that builds a lot of shame up as a teenager when you're struggling with something that you should have gotten over as a child. And mm. so here I am living in this closed off society, being punished for little things. And I think that God is always angry with me. I'm raised with the mentality that God will punish you if you make one little small misstep going outside without asking for permission or saying something to the neighbor that's not a believer or something like that. And it's like, I was held under a strict rule and reign, and I was led to believe that God Almighty was watching over every little move and criticizing me. At age 14, I decided to give my life to Jesus, and right away I noticed a instant change. I became joyful. I had struggled with awful anger issues at that time before I gave my life to the Lord, and I would go and beat up things. It was very shameful for me to talk about it. an awful relationship with my siblings at the time. There's eight of us in our home. My parents had a, a nice-sized family, but it was very dark during those years. So when I gave my life to Jesus, there was an evident change, but then everyone was saying, oh, this joy is going to pass. Don't, don't get too excited. You're going to get cold. So just, just sort of wait off. And everyone was really, it was raining on the day that I thought it should be shining. But there was one person that encouraged me. And she was quite a bit older than me. She was about 15 years older than me at the time. And she said, Jojo, God has a special calling over your life. Don't let anybody crush this unique personality and gift that God's given you. So I took that away. But instead of taking that encouragement and running with it, I decided to go religious. I said, I decided to go really cold to. And it was the zealous spirit that I had in my heart to want to prove myself right before God. And so for the next, from 15, 16, 17, 18, to the age of 19, I was very zealous. I would hold um, radical signs up telling people that they're all going to go to hell for little things. And it really was a, a, a gospel of judgment that I was hitting people on the head with. I was judging ladies for having their sleeves too short, or if they weren't covering their head, I would judge them and say, hey, you're going to go to hell if you don't change this. And it was very judgmental. Instead of focusing on what God has now showed me, I was focusing on the law. And I was focusing on being obedient to the law and getting those brownie points or getting those recognition points with the Father according to the religious system I was raised in. So I rose quickly within the church and became a leader. I started leading the young people, started leading choir. I was very charismatic in a religious way that caused a magnetic type of personality to surround people and get other people radicalized around me. But God had different plans. 
I love um, being outdoors. And when I was 19, we had built this outside hockey rink and it was winter time. So the water had frozen and we're out scuffling around. But unfortunately, an accident happened where a hockey puck came and smashed my face and it was very devastating. And I was so confused because I thought that if anything bad happened to you, it was because God was angry with you. So I went to the emergency room. The doctor was saying I might lose my lower, whole entire lower lip. Uh, my teeth were really messed up at the time. But that started a one year of what I call my mind conf, my inner fight. Dietrich Bonhoeffer speaks of this as well. Um, Corey Ten Boom talks about this in The Hiding Place, where we all go through this dark time of our life. Where we just question everything. We have to find ourselves. And I started spiraling into depression during that time. I read the Bible religiously. I read it for mileage and I was a, a student of the word. I knew the New Old Testament in and out. I knew the New Testament in and out, but I didn't know God's heart. During that year that I was getting my face surgery done, I had a miraculous healing happen. What should have taken three years to heal was healed in 12 months. But during that time, they stopped sending an accountability partner with me to town. So I had more freedom. So I took that freedom and went shopping. I would go to the mall by myself and I would take that extra two or three hours to go and, and talk to other church leaders. And during that time, my mind started opening up, but yet I was sort of judge them still. I would still preach at them. And I started writing music during this time. And a lot of things are happening as I'm, I'm, as I'm saying here, but I started writing music and it was like this urge that I had in my body to write. And I would teach that to the choir. The choir would go sing at an event and people would come back and be like, where did this music come from? And then I would get in trouble for it. So not only did my face get smashed in, the elders were upset that I was writing new music. And I felt like God was slapping me on the face for this gift. During that time, women were being oppressed around me. Moms were being told to shut up in church. They were never allowed to speak and share at all. It was very um, patriarch set up and it was very oppressive. And so I'm looking around wondering what my life purpose is because I feel like the very gifts that I have are being stomped on. I go home and there's a raging fight in our home. And there was unfortunately a lot of um, some bad things happened in our home at that time. Even though my parents are very loving, there was a bipolar relationship going on with all of us. And that dark depression that was in me was, was bubbling over as well. And so I went into the house it was not a good environment. I ran right to my bedroom and I was done with everything. I was done being judged by the elders. I thought God hated me. I was done with God because I felt like he had judged me because of that accident. And I felt like life was purposeless. I saw people being pushed down. I saw people being oppressed. And I thought the whole world was going to, you know, eternal damnation. And so I went to my room, threw my head in a pillow and said, God, I don't want to live anymore. And I cussed God out. I was so upset at the creator of the universe for making me because I felt worthless. I had given him my whole life. I had given him every single thing that I thought would please God. Yet I felt so worthless and empty and hollow. And so I told God, I said, Lord, if you don't show me what I'm here on earth to do, I don't want to live anymore. And I'm ashamed I said that. But a week later, I went to go take a nap. And this is where everything changes. I go to lay down, not thinking much of it. I set a 29 minute timer, I instantly lay on my bed. And the moment I, my head touched my pillow, I felt a loud crack in my neck and I couldn't move. I was paralyzed and I started to panic. I started to hyperventilate and I started going, no, 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 no. What's happening to my body? You know, I'm 20 years old. This should not be happening. I'm a young, healthy man. I, 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 what's going on? I started hyperventilating over and over and over again. And I realized I was dead. I realized I could not re-enter my body. Moments later, I saw the back of my body, and that's when I realized I couldn't get back into my body. I was a spirit separated from the flesh, and I realized my hand could go through things. My hand went through the dresser nearby me, and in a panic moment, I ran out of my bedroom right through the wall, and it felt like a light wind, and I started screaming at a lady that was running into the – she was walking into the wash house with a baby on her hip because our community did all the laundry in the middle. And I said, help, help, help. My, my body's dead in there. I need help. Someone please help. Mm. But she didn't respond. Her eyes were glazed over. We were trapped. We couldn't, I could not access the physical world anymore. 
And at that moment of desperation, my hearing started going berserk. I started hearing supersonically. I started hearing things from miles away in a nearby town. And during that moment of just a stunned reality, it felt like a cheese grater was just grating on my senses. It was a mental overload. An angel showed up to my right, this tall angel. And he said this one line. He said, it is time for judgment. Mm. And chills just went through my body. And I'm thinking, well, I'm dead. I can no longer get into my body. No one knows I'm paralyzed, lifeless in my room. And so I conceded. I said, okay, it's, it, it's time to go. So I left the earth. And as, as we lifted off the earth, the earth went into this Google Earth view. And as we passed through these levels, there was the demonic force that was sweeping across the land. And I saw these bright sunlight rays that were bursting through these demonic realms. And it was like, I understood that God had placed good on the earth and that was breaking through, but there was a fight against that good. And these demonic forces were arguing with each other. They're very disorganized yet organized against the good on earth. It was evil and good. There was a black and white battle going on. Pass through these different levels and demons would call out to me and say, Jojo, don't go with him. And my body would shake in terror as they would look at me and say, don't go with this angel. And this angel was glowing with holiness. And he was just shining bright. But I knew I did not want to go with the evil horde. So I went with this angel. And moments later, I collided into a wall of water. And I was suspended in it. And I didn't know why. But the angel quickly moved to the front and said, you must let all that is from this earth out of you. You cannot take what is in you where we're going. Because I was still holding on to the attachment of earth. I didn't want to let it go. I was still attached to everything. But I had to surrender that. So I, after a, a struggle, I decided to surrender. And the moment I did that, we were transformed through that wall. And the throne room was below us. And when I say it was the most brightest thing I've ever seen at that point in my life is an is a understatement. My, I had to shield my eyes as we started descending into it. As my eyes adjusted, the first thing I saw was the tiles that we landed on. I looked down and it looked like an artist had spent hundreds of hours creating this one tile that had this clear epoxy with like golden gems and flowers in, in Boston. It was the most beautiful thing I saw, but yet I'm terrified. I'm being judged. I look up, there's a sea of angels all staring back at me with blank expressions. Mm. Angel to my right's not saying a word. And I look to my left and I see God sitting on a throne. He's a bit bigger than the angel and he's drinking out of a coffee mug. And my heart welled up in anger because I thought he wasn't doing anything. With my fear mentality at that time and my religious spirit, I thought God surely should be busy protecting his children. But yet he is here sitting, doing nothing. Babies are dying. Mothers are being hurt. Fathers are without jobs. And I kept going down the list in my mind. And as I was angry, I heard these booming surround sound voice that came out of every nook and cranny of the throne room. Let judgment begin. And without my consent, three big hologram screens pop up in front of me. They're about 12 foot tall, about that wide as well. And my life started playing from the very beginning. And I saw my parents holding a brand new little baby Jojo in their arms, a loving family in 1995 there in Lake Dallas, Texas. I saw a few good memories and then my life just turned dark. And I saw, I did not see very good memories. I saw myself getting angry and the wrath that I had as a young child again, the anger tantrums that I had with my siblings and my parents, the fights that were going on in our community, the church splits and the division. It was so awful to watch. And then I saw myself cuss God out. I got so angry at God. Everyone watched it. It was all on display. There was not a detail missing. And at this point, it felt like a couple of days had been passed because this dragged on and on watching my life. So you, Jojo, you were cussing at God. Unfortunately, I'm ashamed I did that. And that point, that's a very dangerous point, obviously, to be in. Yes. Because uh, you were being held to a standard uh, that was very, very strict. And so uh, 
I would think that you being before God now in the judgment seat, that perhaps you were expecting that maybe God was going to be uh, as equally or even more strict than what you had been to others or what the religion had enforced upon you. Absolutely. And so once I saw that a week before I went to take that nap, I saw that scene that evening where I buried my head in the pillow and I was at my darkest moment. I was at my deepest moment of despair. I was at my, the pit of my depression. I saw a week later when I went to take that nap and I heard a loud crack the moment I had my head laid down. And I'm watching it in third person, which is very strange. It's very strange to see your life on big screens from a third person perspective, it's like playing a video game and you see in your little, you know, icon out in front of you. That's how it looked. I could see everything around me, in front of me, around. It was just, I could hear the sounds. I could hear what people were saying to me. I could see my thoughts. And this whole time my life was playing was all negative, except for the beginning. And right after that, the screens closed up right after my neck snapped. And I knew that's when I, I had passed away in my sleep. And I didn't know what happened. I thought, did an angel, 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 did an angel strike my neck or did, did God just decide to, to, to take me right then and there? I didn't know why I died. And then the next words I hear in my mind, my thoughts were racing. The next words I hear, the surround sound voice, this deep surround sound voice comes out of everywhere again. Is his name in the book of life? And I thought to myself, oh no, because in Revelations, it says if your name is not found in the book of life, you'll be cast out. It was very cognitive. Everything was crystal clear. Did you expect your, to be written into the book of life at this point? What was your expectation? At, at this point in the judgment, and I'll explain here in a minute, but it's like I had, I had no recollection of my love for Jesus at this point. All I saw was the religious spirit my whole life, which is, mm. is going to get really incredible here. As this angel next to me holds this huge notebook, the, the pages were glowing. He starts reading through all these names. And I say some of the same names every time, but it's Daniel, Kaylin, Jessica, Rebecca, I heard the name Timothy, I heard the name Joseph. And I thought, what if I claim the name Timothy? What if I claim the name Joseph and just slid my way in? Because my real name is Joe, but I've been called Jojo since birth. So I was like, well, Joseph is sort of like an act, is sort of like a little bit of a kickoff from Joe. And, and I was like, no, I will not respond unless my name is called, which is Jojo. And it felt like hours passed and all of a sudden, my hair stands on the edge of my body as I hear this electrifying word, Jojo. And the angel spoke it and God jumps off his throne. The coffee mug disappears and he's now facing me. He says, Jojo, you were not ashamed to stand up for me. You were not ashamed to stay my name in public and you were unashamed to love others around you. He said, this whole time you thought this is how I viewed you. And he showed me that the previous way I had just seen my life was the mindset, the, the sunglasses that I had on. He took those sunglasses off. He says, this is how I see you. I'm here to show you how good I see you. And he played my life over from the beginning when I was born in 1995. And he showed me all the good moments when I would help my, I have a handicapped brother, when I would help him get out of bed and dress him and clean him. And then he showed me when I would give my siblings a glass of water and do the extra chores when I'd go the extra mile for our neighbors during harvest season. And I'm just overwhelmed by this Abba Father love that I'm not expecting. I'm like, God, I thought you were so religious. I thought you were so angry. Why are you so loving? He says, you thought I was the way I first showed you, but this is how I see you. And he started playing fun memories. Of when I love playing with um, sports balls and he, he showed me all these fun memories. And then he showed me multiple times in my life when he saved me from certain death. There was one time I almost got crushed on a tractor and he miraculously took that tractor and put it back on its wheels. And he showed me that when I said the name Jesus, he acted on that and he put it right back in his place. Another time a gun went off net right next to my head. He showed me how he diverted that bullet right past my skull. And every single moment he's like, he, he showed it all. And all the angels are just rejoicing. They're saying, holy, holy is the lamb that was slain. And I'm weeping with hot tears undone by the father's love. Because my whole life, I thought God was a God of hate. And now I'm experiencing this love and I'm realizing that he loved me the whole entire time. He felt every whipping I had. He felt every ounce of shame. I felt that omnipresence that we've all been told about. God is everywhere. He's like the oxygen we breathe. 
he showed me that that was true. And I started just crying my eyes out. And as these big hot tears started falling, I noticed they didn't hit the ground. I said, I was like, God, why aren't my tears hitting the ground? And he reminded me the verse in Psalms. I've caught all your tears and put them in a bottle. Paraphrase it there. And I was just like overjoyed. And at that moment, he had wrapped me in this like rainbow infused hug. There's so many colors flying around. But I looked down. And I saw the old Jojo just flying away. The bitterness, the deceit, the lying, the hating, the anger problems, the illness, the sicknesses that I had borne my whole life all just melting off like hot slag and I saw this new body being formed and I started feeling renewed my mind was clear I had no guilt I had no shame the fear that had plagued me my whole entire life was wiped away and that is the most freeing feeling I've ever felt in my whole life and I knew at that moment my favorite moment was knowing I was forgiven and that one lost sinner had come home and all of heaven was rejoicing. It says in the scripture, when one lost sinner comes home, all of heaven rejoices or comes into the fold to be more clearly. And I knew that God is a passionate God that desires to have a relationship with each one of us. And while we're in the throne room, God got so excited. And I'm going to go into some of the details and in in, I've done it in other interviews, but one of the interesting things that God said to me is he says that the desires that you've had in your heart, Jojo, to write music and to love other people, to serve other people, those are from me. Those desires that you've questioned, that other people have questioned, those are actually from me. I've placed them in your heart. And my eyes just got so big. I thought, I thought to myself, like, you've been with me this whole time. Like, those good ideas were not my own. They were your ideas, but yet you gave me credit for them. And I realized that God is so intentional that he loves to give us good ideas and he compliments us for those ideas. He started talking about inventions and he just went on and on about how he inspires people to build and to do good on this earth. And I realized that the good I saw on earth was God working among his children and the enemy hates that. And it just was so amazing. It's freeing. Moments later, he says these words. And now when he's talking, I hear his voice within me. It's just the strangest thing to hear that voice from within. It wasn't just around me anymore. It's coming from within me because he had purified me. He had forgiven me. That religious spirit that was just so rotten. He just healed me of that. And he said, I, I want you to learn these two things. I want you to know my word. And I want you to know music. Excuse me. And when he said, I want you to learn my word, my heart leaped with joy. But then when he said music, I knew he wanted me to have fun for eternity. And that's what I knew. He was an like that on a whole nother level. I realized he was an intentional God that wants me to have that eternal impact. He showed me some incredible things, but the biggest point that I learned from this all moments later I woke up and I was shocked to be back on my bed my alarm was going off it was 29 minutes I had been gone felt like I'd been gone for almost a week time stopped it felt like but yet I was only gone for 29 minutes but the thing I learned the most is that God is a God that wants to have a personal relationship with you he set his son Jesus to die on the cross to save us from our sins and he desires that we have a personal relationship with Jesus. And when I talked to the Father, I felt like they were all in one. I didn't see Jesus, but I knew that my healing needed to happen with the Father. And I realized that every single word in the scriptures has been inspired to point us to a loving, intentional, purpose-filled relationship with Jesus while we're on this earth. Because eternity is going to be so amazing. Not sucking lollipops on clouds. It's going to be living a purpose-filled eternity. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is that's such a praise. Uh, Jojo, I, God obviously returned you. So yes. you had learned the, the love, graciousness of, of uh, God. But you returned to this strict religion. 
So tell yeah. us about that and how you were received and how your ministry or what you did changed as a result of having faced God. Yes. So when I woke up from that, I was shocked. I cried and I did not want to be back on earth, but I noticed something was different inside of here. The depression was gone. And throughout that next week, I realized I was fully healed of 20 years of bedwetting, of over six years of crippling celiac, which is a gluten intolerance. I was healed miraculously. No doctor's explanation on how I got healed other than I was healed. But there was a few elders, and unfortunately, my closest parents, my my direct parents, they all thought I had a demon. So 95% of the church was so blessed by this. There was a revival that broke out. And young people were starting to give their life to Jesus because of this testimony. But unfortunately, the enemy hates it when good happens. So I decided three months later to move to move on. I, I don't believe in leaving and leaving a wreck of places. I feel like you need to honor the culture I was raised in. I was raised in a very uh, strict Mennonite culture most of my life. I love the Mennonites, but the, the, the strictness I was in was a very 1% of the Mennonite groups. And I said, Lord, what do you want me to move forward with? And he said, I've called you to redeem ex Menno because anyone that left was called, oh, he was an ex Mennonite. He's ex Menno. And it was like a curse word. But this is to be a platform where people can share their stories of hope and redemption to know that God has redeemed us and he's calling us to live a purpose filled life. You know, Jojo, uh, many of our guests, if not all of our guests, were returned for a message, a special message to those uh, that they are able to share with. So can you share what that special message is that you would like to convey to our audience? Yes, that God wants your dream to become activated. He did not design you to go day to day wondering what you should do. That if you do not know your purpose, get on your knees and cry out to God and he will answer you. Well, we have uh, dreams, I think, that are being activated right now that have lied dormant uh, for some time. And uh, your account, Jojo, just speaks to how God, the judge, does not judge us according necessarily, always, sometimes, by virtue of how we judge others. But he does judge righteously, righteously, doesn't he? So good. Yes. Well, thank you for being with us, Jojo. This has been a great blessing. And uh, we want to encourage everyone to uh, be of good cheer if you are in Christ, because heaven is in your future. Until next time. Thank you for watching this episode of Heaven Encounters. If you'd like more information, you can go to Randy K Ministries at randyk.org. Take care and God bless.